in this video, we're going to talk about NAN, an API based automation platform built for developers and coders. And it's quickly becoming one of my favorite platforms to automate all kinds of tasks. I'm going to show you how you can get started with NAN, both on their online plan and how you can install it locally. Because yes, NAN is actually open source and completely free. And then show you how we can build a very simple Telegram bot, all powered by AI, in just a couple of minutes. If you're familiar with things, like Zapier or make.com. It's really similar to those, but in my opinion, it's a lot more customizable and a lot easier to set up. So let's not waste any more time and get into it. So just kind of give you guys a quick overview of what N8N is about. It allows you to make custom automations with their node based API framework that you can either host through their own website, or you can install it locally on GitHub and self host it yourself, which has been the big selling point for me. There really isn't anything you can't automate with N8N, which makes it a great choice for building long-term automation workflows. And also it's completely free if you self-host it. NAM claims it's catered to technical people, but I've honestly found their UI really intuitive and really easy to pick up. All you need to know is a little bit about JSON structures, and that's all you need to know to start building really complex automations. Everything is basically drag and drop. And like I said, it's very similar to something like Zapier, but just gives you a lot more customization in what you can do. They have a ton of integrations, which you can see here. Pretty much everything you can think of, you can see here from OpenAI, WordPress, Shopify, LinkedIn, and so, so many others. You can take a look at the list for yourself. And also if there isn't the API integration that you're looking for, you can always make an HTTP request and then use your own custom authentication for whatever kind of service you're looking to connect to. Two nodes that I want to point out that I absolutely love are their email features here. NAN allows you to hook up email inboxes to automatically reply to emails and then automatically send out emails. These are two that I absolutely love about this service and it's completely free and built in with NAN. When it comes to pricing, NAN is pretty cheap, starting at only 20 bucks a month for only five active workflows and 2.5K automation executions. And they also have plans that scale according to your usage, starting at $50 and then going up to 120. But as I mentioned before, we have two different ways we can actually run N8N. The first is that we can sign in as usual, like we could any other program. And then if we want to use our automations, we can just pay for one of the plans or we can self host NAN and use all their features completely for free. So I'm going to show you both of these options in this video and you can pick whichever one is best for your needs. To get started on their website, all you have to do is just come into the sign in button here and then create an account. And then once you're in here, you're pretty much all ready to go. And I'll go over this later, but first let me show you how you can install this locally on your computer for free. So if we head back over to their main page here, click on their GitHub and to get NA and running, it is really, really simple. First, we need to make sure we have Node.js installed on their machine. For this, at the time of this recording, we're going to want to use Node.js 20. As I tried it out with 20 one and it didn't actually work. So anywhere I think between 18 and 20 is fine for this. So you can just install the recommended version right here. And then once you have Node.js installed, we're going to want to type in MPX NAN into our terminal. So I'm in the VS code, but you can use whatever terminal you like. And then all you have to do is just paste in the code and this will go ahead and install any kind of dependencies or packages that it needs to run. I've already done it. So it only took a couple seconds for me, but the first time booting it up for you, it might take a couple minutes. But what that will do is give us this this new localhost URL here, which we can then click on to get into our NAN automations dashboard here. When you log in for the first time, it might ask you a couple questions, but yeah, it's basically as simple as that. So now that we're inside of NAN, let me show you some of the things you can do. I'm going to go over how you can use this software, and then we're going to make a very simple Telegram bot that will connect with OpenAI and Telegram to kind of give us automated AI responses to our Telegram chat bot. We can have this all ran locally on our our machine. This will be the same process if you want to do it on their server, but in this case, I'm going to run it locally on my machine because there's one thing I want to mention if you do go this route and build it on your machine. So you have a couple panels over here, the workflows, templates, credentials, variables, and all executions. If we hop into the workflows tab, we have all of our workflows here. You can see I have a couple that I've been playing around with right here. And from here, we can either add a workflow or we can click on ones that we've already made. So if I want to go into this one, I can click on it and I can just hop into my workflow here. And then we also have the templates section here, which gives us a 
big library of user created templates that we can just automatically put into our NA and workflow to use inside of our project, which is really sweet. There is a ton of projects we can go through here and kind of look at and use chatting with the Google Sheet, Google Maps, Scraper, allow AI to fetch API data, summarize web pages, AI agents. There's all kinds of good stuff in here. And now if you want to use one of these templates, all you have to do is just click into one. I'll click on this chat with a Google Sheet using AI and we brought to this window here. We'll be able to see the automation and then kind of there's a little description on how it works and what it uses. See this one uses Google Sheets and open AI and we can kind of zoom in and scroll around to kind of look at what exactly it's doing. Then if you want to use this workflow, we can just click on use this workflow here and that will copy it into a new workflow inside of our account. It'll ask us to use our credentials, but actually what I'm going to do is skip this for now. And here we go. We're inside of our new workflow here that we just copied over literally in seconds. We have what looks like a custom AI agent here as well as a sub workflow custom tool here. This is a very simple layout of how we can use tools inside of AI agents to run other kind of automatic workflows. I'm probably going to do a separate video on this, but just know these are super powerful here. Basically it allows us to call a function from our agent and then run automatic workflows. In order to get this to work with any kind of workflow you import, you're going to want to make sure you fill out all of the little squares and circles here that have little warning boxes next to them, which indicates they don't have any credentials or API keys and they can't be used just yet. To fix this, we're going to want to click on into our node here and then we can pick the credential that we want. I already have an OpenAI credential, but you can click on create new credential here, put in your API key you get from OpenAI and select it and select it like that. And then same thing goes for Google Sheets. You would come into here, create new credential, and then put in your OAuth 2 credentials from your Google Cloud console inside here. I'm gonna skip this one for now, but you get the idea. You can copy in workflows and then edit them directly inside of here. Also, we have the credentials tab here, which just shows you all of the active credentials that you have. You can see I have my Google Calendar, Telegram, SMTP stuff, OpenAI accounts, all in here. And what's nice is you only have to authenticate one time and you can use it in as many workflows as you want, which is super helpful and super handy. And then if you ever want to change something, you can just change it right from inside here. You don't have to go into each automation and change all your API keys. It just puts it all in one place here, which I love. And then for variables, I haven't really touched this one, to be honest. This is if you want to use any outside variables and more enterprise projects. But for our purposes, we're not going to be using this. And we also have our executions tab over here, which will basically be where we can see all of our runs for our workflows, whether they succeeded or not, or they're still working. So you can see I have a couple of failed ones down here. For the most part, they're kind of working. Working. But this is just so you can make sure the stuff that you're running is actually running correctly. But now let me show you how you can start building custom workflows inside of NAN. So if we head back over to the workflows tab, I'm going to make a new workflow here and we're brought to a very simple starter node right here. We can click on add first step and we can type in whatever kind of node we want. I'll probably move this over here for today. You can see there's all kinds of different things we can choose from here. We can pick on app events. So if we want, for instance, you know, if something happens in. We can say if something happens inside of Google Sheets, we can see if, you know, for instance, on a row is added or on a row is updated or added or updated. If we click on one, it'll put in our new trigger here. And whenever a row is added inside of our Google Sheet, this will trigger here and then run our workflow, right? And there's a ton of different triggers we can choose from inside of here. There's also schedule automations. So if you want to check for something every hour or every day, that's how you would do it. There's also custom webhooks, form submissions manually. If you want to click on something, Thing, and then just test the workflow or when something gets called on by another workflow. I'll probably eventually make a video on this, but if you're using functions inside of NAN, you're going to want to use this to call other workflows inside of your workflow. It's kind of like workflow inception a little bit, but it is super handy and super useful to make really complex applications and automations. So you can go through and find whatever trigger fits your needs. And for this instance, we're going to be using Telegram for our bot and we're going to be using the Telegram trigger on message. So what this is going to do is whenever we get a new message into our Telegram bot, it'll trigger this note. I already have some credentials in here, but for the sake of this video, we're going to make some new ones. To make some new Telegram credentials, I'm going to come into my Telegram app and then I'm going to go into the bot father here and I'm going to make a new bot using the slash new bot command. And this will allow us to name our bot, which I will name test video bot. And then we have to give it a bot name. So I'll just name it test video underscore bot. Of course, it's already taken. We'll do Mike's 
test video underscore bot. And there we go. So now we have our new bot that we can access with this API key here. So I'll just click on the API key and then I'll come back over here and I'll put my API key inside of here and click on save. And that saved our new API key for our bot. So now that we have our new trigger inside of our workflow, let's test it out. If I click on test step here, and listen, you'll actually notice that I get this error down here in the bottom right. If you're using NAN on their own app page, you won't get this error because it will be using their OAuth redirect URLs. Because we're hosting this on localhost, our bot actually cannot connect to our APIs on our local machine. So to fix this, what I'm actually going to do is this. I'm gonna exit out of this error here. And once again, you're only gonna need to do this if you're running it locally on your own machine. I'm gonna name my workflow Telegram Bot two, just because I've made a couple of them and make sure it's saved. And if we close out of NAM, you even see I get this error right here. I'm going to hit control C to stop our instance here. And I'm going to type in this command instead, npx nan start dash dash tunnel. And what this will do is spin up a new version of NAN, but instead it will use this tunnel URL right here, this hungry grasshopper URL here, which will allow us to connect our localhost application to external APIs. It took me a long time to figure this out. And I thought it was something important if you're using NAN to test out automations. So just keep that in mind if you get any kind of errors like the one I shown you, but you can come back into your localhost here and you can start using it like we were before. So now if we come inside of Telegram here, test our step, and then what I will do is I will create a new bot window here and then click on start. And you'll see as soon as I did that, we have our new little section here for our bot. And this is all the information that we got from my last message here. You can see we have our name, last name, the language we're in, the chat ID, the date, and the text I just sent, which was slash start to get this bot going. So now we can take this information and we can use this JSON data here in the next step of our workflow. So we can click on the arrow here. And then what I'm going to do is actually use one of the AI features, but there's a ton of different things you can do. Like I was mentioning, you can pick from one of the services here. You can use data manipulation functions here. Like if you want to run custom code, edit fields, split the JSON, do whatever you want. This is where you would find that stuff here. But I'm gonna use this advanced AI section here and we're gonna use the AI agent one here to start with. There's other kinds of ones that we can use, even like the OpenAI's new assistant one here, but we're gonna start with the AI agent. And if I get out of this real quickly here, you can see we have our AI agent right here with a new chat trigger. So this chat trigger is basically a default trigger for the AI agent, and I'm just gonna remove this one to get started with, but basically if you were to open this up, you could test it and then chat with it, and then that would do a chat response similar to the JSON structure that we got in here, but it would be for just the chat trigger, but I'm going to get rid of this one for now. And now we're going to want to come inside of our AI chat agent. And now we can see the information we got from Telegram on the left side, and then we can put that through the AI bot here, and that will input out something on the right side here. So to get this to work, we're going to want to take our text here and this text box right here is basically our prompt. I'm gonna say respond to this as a helpful assistant with emojis. And now we're just gonna wanna drag in the response that we got from our telegram trigger here, which is this text box here and put that inside of our text box here. And you'll see it actually adds in this expression here for the JSON that we got from the telegram message to put inside of this bot. If I were to test this step here, you'll actually notice we get another error. We need to also select a model. So we have this model output here, which we'll use. I'll drag this one out. We'll pick on the open AI chat model, but there's also a couple other ones you can choose from. And then we can connect in our open AI account. I already have some credentials for it, but you can come into here and then put your API key inside of here. If you don't know how to get your open AI API key, you can come into open AI, head on over to their API services, and then you can come into the API API key section here and then create a new secret key and then just copy over that key and put it inside of here and you're all ready to go and you can choose whatever kind of model you want inside of this drop down. I'm going to stick with 3.5 turbo. We should be all good to go. So now if I go back inside the agent here and I test this step, look at that. 
Hello, how can I assist you? Please let me know what you need help with. With a smiley face, you can see it even adds the emojis in here like we asked in the prompt. Fantastic. We have our response output. We need to actually send this response back to our Telegram bot. So I'm gonna make a new note here, type in Telegram, and then we're going to make a new message action here for a send text message. But there's all kinds of stuff you can do here to put inside of your bot. You can make this as complex as it needs to be, but we're just gonna make a simple message back to our bot here. So we have our credentials for our Telegram account already sent in here. And now we need to fill out two things. If we were to test this out, yeah, we need our chat ID and our text right here. For our text, we're gonna use our output. And then for our chat ID, we're gonna come back over into our Telegram trigger here and we're gonna use our chat ID that we got from our initial Telegram trigger. And this will allow us to send our message back inside of the same chat window. So now if I kind of have this up, but also test the step here, you'll notice it'll execute and then we have our new message here right inside of our telegram bot look at that it also gives a little watermark here we can get rid of that very easily by just coming down to an ad field here append any attribution and get rid of this so now if i were to test this step again you'll notice we have a new message here without that little message down here it took me a while to figure that one out too but yeah from here we're basically all good to go we can exit out of this we can save our chat bot if we click this button from inactive to active this will run our workflow constantly when whenever it gets a new trigger and sends back a response from our bot here. Now, if we give this a test, let's say, what color is the sun and enter. The color of the sun is usually seen as yellow or white due to its apparent color when viewed from Earth's atmosphere. That is fantastic. Let's continue. Let's try out this. Can you tell me a joke? Sure, here's a joke for you. Why couldn't the bicycle find its way home? Because it's lost its way heel. All right, that was a terrible joke, but you get the idea. If we want to add in long-term memory for our bot, we can use this memory tool here. We can use the simple window buffer memory here, which just kind of gives us some simple memory that we can use for our bot. For the session ID here, I'll actually put in the chat ID. And this will just ensure that over the long term, the chat bot still remembers what we're putting inside of our chat. If we want to recall information later. And also, if we want, we can always change the prompt inside of here to get it to respond however we want. We can also add in properties down here if we want to add in a system message or a human message to get this chat bot a little bit more fine tuned to however you want want it to perform. Then also, lastly, I do want to mention, I think I'm going to make a follow-up video to this one. There's this tools section here, which allows you to run custom tools inside of the agent. So if I wanted to add a calculator, a custom Python or JavaScript tool, this search API, Wikipedia, Wolfram Alpha, or this custom N8N tool here, which allows us to run other workflows inside of this chatbot, this is how you can add those here. If you want to get started with N8N down below, I'll have a link to where you can get the custom template that I used in this video, and also where you can get started using and building custom workflows. I've been having a lot of fun with NAN and I really do think it's one of the new up and coming automation low code softwares that is really gonna become the industry standard when it comes to making super customized automations. If you wanna work with me in building out custom automations or workflows, make sure to book a free time with me down in the description below. We could talk about all your AI and automations needs for your business. I'd love to chat there. Also, if you made it to this far in the video, make sure to give it a fat like and comment what your thoughts are on NAN. A -A on N-A-N. I'd love to hear your feedback down below. But anyway, guys, I think it's going to do it for me in this video. I'll see you all in the next one.